Because that's all they heard as a kid. They heard David Ingalls, you know? Praise the Lord. There's, how many know there's faith in that? Praise God. Well, welcome to uh, the third Sunday of Advent. We're glad to have you this morning. We're, that, I'm singing that song because there's a lot of people that need to be hearing what we're doing right now because there's been a major attack. And we got several families sick. And, um, you know, we, we need to keep putting the word on that. Amen. And overcoming by the, by, the word, by the blood of the Lamb and our word of our testimony. Amen. Hallelujah. And it's no condemnation. It's just that we got to get on it. Amen. As individuals and as a body, we just, we just, we don't have to lay back and go, okay, the devil had knocked us. Oh, well, I guess we'll just wait for the new year or whatever. No, let's get after it. Amen. I am healed. I am whole. Amen. Praise God. Well, um, I think the judges have judged. Is that right? Janie, come on up. Uh, oh, is Jesse doing this or why are we up here? Oh, I'm sitting down. That, that, that's, that's what you want. You want me to shut up and sit down. I'm the appellate court. Drum roll. <laughs> All right. So we're having our first annual. We're going to make this an annual thing because isn't this fun? Yeah. <laughs> so our first annual ugly Christmas sweater competition. And we have a nice little prize for the winner. It's an ornament. <laughs> Expedition Church on it. 2023 ugly Christmas sweater. Sweater what? Winner. Winner. I think that's what it says. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> the lights are a little low. <laughs> okay. All so right. Do you want me to yep. announce? Okay. So we have a winner, and our winner this year, 2023 Ugly Christmas Sweater winner, is Miss Penny. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> do you want me to take it to oh, you? Yep, and no, the appellate court rules in favor of the uh, regular court that ruled earlier. Yeah, that's ugly. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's that's pretty much dog ugly. <laughs> <laughs> that, listen, that disqualifies from being seen. <laughs> it's Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh, oh. <laughs> All right, I have a few announcements, not very many. A couple of announcements. Okay. All right. So um, we're live. Yes, we should be live. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully it is live. I did hit it. So hopefully I didn't. For is it going? Okay, good. Yay. <laughs> All right. Um, so December 22nd, which is this Friday, is our Forged Youth Christmas Party at Pika Tea. We're going to have fun with that. Um, and then just a reminder, if you haven't checked your calendar or your app, um, there's no service this upcoming Sunday and no service the following Wednesday. That's the 24th and the 27th. And there's no prayer on the 26th, giving you guys some uh, holiday. Well, yes, we're not banning prayer or anything like that. <laughs> Yeah, fasting from prayer. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yes, no midweek organized prayer. No, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, and then the calendar will be posting soon. If you have the calendar downloaded on your, app, on your phone in your calendar app, or if you have the app, which hopefully everyone does, you'll see those updates. You won't have to do anything. They'll just automatically sync with everything. Um, and I think that's it. That's it. <laughs> I know it's been a long list, and now it's like there's not very much. <laughs> and, um, you know, uh, it's, just, it's the way it goes. You know, we just start, you know, things start winding down. Everybody gets really busy during Christmas. And um, one of the things that we have done historically 
is focused on family during Christmas, okay? Because we, we believe in you being a witness and a testimony to your family, people that you would you may be spending time with that you don't normally spend time with except at Christmas or something. And um, this is a great opportunity to be light for them. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And, um, and then I know other churches, you know, they, fo they focus on this, the high holy day. You got like Easter, they've got high holy days, uh, Christmas and Easter, and they have to have services. And, um, you know, they can have all kinds of arguments either way. Um, but you can be a witness the other 364 days a year. Right? Amen? Amen. And uh, not just save it for one day. Just saying. So, um, anyway, just, you know, that, that's why we, we typically don't, if, if Christmas falls right on that weekend, then we don't, we don't have the service that day. Okay? Um, amen. So, and you may disagree with me out there. That's, that's fine. You, you can have your opinion. Okay? You do you. Uh, you you do you, and we'll do me. We'll do we'll do us, amen. Uh, we still love Jesus, and we are celebrating His birth. We will next Sunday be be broadcasting a, the uh, fourth Advent Sunday service on the internet. Okay, from uh, my fireside by my Christmas tree. If it's cold enough, I have the fire on. If it's not, I'll have the air conditioner on and the fire on. The doors open and everything. All right? Praise the Lord. But anyway, um, we, will, we will be having an um, internet service next Sunday. Praise the Lord. And um, so you can tune in at our regular service time. Isn't that good? Now, we have a lot of ugly sweaters in here. Some of y'all did not participate. Uh, you have another year to get ready for next year. Okay? We want 100% we want participation next year. Um, Jerry, you don't even have to go out and buy one. Just bring your Dallas Cowboy jersey, and you're fine. <laughs> Woo! Well, we're going after it now. I mean, it's obvious we keep, we keep loving on you and, and everything, and you wear that stupid jersey around. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh-huh. Yep. It's not America's team. It's the Pinko Kami Russian team. He loves his Cowboys. I think next year we ought to uh, see if the Lord will convert anybody to a Redskin fan. <laughs> All right. Well, praise the Lord. Welcome. Yeah, we just have a little fun here at the expense of Jerry. And, um, you know, I, 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 think I, t I think I said this Wednesday night, but for those who weren't here, I sent him a meme the other day that I found on Facebook, and it had um, – it had um, – um, number of rings since 1987, J-Lo 6, Cowboys 0. Because <laughs> J-Lo's been married six times. She's had six rings. Cowboys had not had any. I if I find anything like that, Jerry gets it. <laughs> he gets a copy. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Open your Bibles, if you will, to the ninth chapter of the book of Isaiah. It is Advent, uh, the third Sunday of Advent. And today's uh, Advent uh, subject is joy. Joy. Amen. Hallelujah. And so in Isaiah chapter 9, we will read um, verses 1 through 7. Nevertheless, the dimness shall not um, be such as was in her vexation, when at the first he, he, he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, and afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan and Galilee of the nations. Um, thou hast multiplied the nation, I'm sorry, the people that walked in darkness, this is what I want you to underline, 
has seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them the light shined. Thou hast multiplied the nations and not increased the joy. Now, about every other translation I can find says has increased the joy. This is the, the reason for this is, is that when the King James translators were translating this verse, they were relying heavily on the, the Vulgate. The um, most translations, I went to the, Jew, the Jewish Bible, the complete Jewish study Bible, um, all kinds of Bibles, um, they went to the Septuagint instead of the Vulgate. Okay? And all the, the Septuagint says that um, the light, uh, that he increased the joy. Now, I think what the, the Septuagint, I mean, the Vulgate was trying to say was that, it, that God did not make them have joy. Okay? Their joy was increased because we find out from reading on. Their joy was increased, but it wasn't because God made them have joy. Okay? Uh, because it goes on and says this. Um, they joy before, before according to the joy of the harvest, and as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. Glory to God. For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden and the staff off his shoulder and the rod of his oppressor in the day of Midian. Now, um, for every battle of the warrior is, a, is, the, um, is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood, but there shall be one, they shall be with burning and full, full of fire, fuel for fire. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government, there shall be no end. Um, of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and his king, upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and justice from henceforth even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Now, as he's talking about um, the land of, you know, Zebulun, not Zebulun, North Carolina, obviously, and Naphtali, uh, it's, it's during the era of the Assyrian invasions of uh, Israel during uh, 734 to 732 B.C., before Christ. And there was a very dark time. And this, you know, invasions, not one, they just kept getting invaded. And the, in the middle of this uh, ongoing attack, uh, Isaiah prophesied, right in the middle of it, darkest time. He prophesied that they would see a great light. Hallelujah. That there was a great light coming. Glory to God. Aren't you glad? And then those in that land, they're walking in darkness. They're walking in oppression. They're walking in this, this difficult time, and a great light will shine. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And they'll see that light. And God's going to, um, you know, he look at it. He says, and the people that walked in darkness shall see a great light. Hallelujah. In the land, and upon them that hath the light shine. And then God multiplies the nation, you know, increased it. And then joy came. Now, I think that's what they're trying to say. Uh, they're trying to take that construct and get it to say that God did increase, the joy was increased, but it wasn't like he just went and put joy in them. It's because what he did, they rejoiced. They accepted what he did. They were excited about what he did. So it wasn't like you're laying there, you know, and you have what they call Holy Ghost meetings, and somebody lays hands on you, and you got joy, and you're, you're laughing and everything because of, of, of an anointing that gave you joy. That's, that's, that's not what happened. It was God did a work. He shined the light, and they began to joy and rejoice as a time of harvest. Amen. Hallelujah. As when men have won the war and they're dividing the spoil. There is an excitement. There's a joy that came to them because of this light. Hallelujah. So even in that dark time, that difficult time, because the light came, there was joy. See, his light will bring joy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The day of Midian here um, refers to Gideon's defeat of the Midianites. Hallelujah. And he gave, you know, remember, he kept reducing his army. 32,000 to 3,000 to 300, amen, declaring that the, the deliverance came by the power of God and not by numbers or the ability of the people. Our joy comes not because 
you know, how great we are. Our joy comes not because we did some really cool stuff. Our joy came by the hand of deliverance from God, and we rejoice in his work. Amen? The, the joy of being free, the joy of being delivered, the joy of being uh, experiencing communion with God. Hallelujah. Not because we went out and we, we did all kinds of cool stuff and we we're really hip. You know, we're, we're, we, are the, we are the bomb. That's what you'll do. You'll bomb. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. The Messiah is coming to put an end to the oppression. Here's this prophecy. There's, the Messiah is coming to put an end to the oppression. Amen? He's going to stop it. But he's going to come as a child. For unto us a child is born. Son is given. Hallelujah. Amen? So we know that this section is not just some random thing talking about uh, Israel and some, and, and some other aspect. It's talking about this coming light to the land of Messiah. And he's going to bring joy. The light will bring joy. Hallelujah. See, the entrance of thy word, it giveth light. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld His glory as the only begotten of the Father. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. We beheld His what? The glory, the light of His presence. The light is shining in the darkness. See, just like we talked about hope. See, there's been a proclamation of hope. See, prophecy will bring hope. When you look at the scripture prophecy, hope comes. You can look at this world and say, is this all there is? No. Hallelujah. We got the hope of a new heaven and a new earth. We got before that, we got the hope of the return of, of Messiah. Hey, amen. Jesus coming back. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And you know, first in the rapture of the church, and then secondly, the uh, the ascending to the earth and standing on the earth, walking through the eastern gate, even though the Muslims locked it up, don't matter, he's walking through it anyway. I, I, I got to think that their, their decision-making paradigm is pretty stupid. Because if God is God and Jesus is the Son of God and he's the second person of the Godhead, do you really think brick is going to stop him from going through? He's going through. Amen which would be even more supernatural and more of a sign and a wonder to those there because he just walks through the wall. Amen? And you can go to the rock of the dome and write, there is no son of God, there is no son of God, there is no son of God, there is no son of God in Arabic, and it doesn't matter. He's still the son of God. See, they built that dome of the rock on what they thought was the old temple mount, the, mount, the temple on the mount's um, foundations and they have found out they missed it by 300 feet. They found it, and they th they're threatening absolute destruction of Jerusalem if the Jews tried to rebuild because they found the foundations. They're going to rebuild the temple. There ain't nothing they can do to stop it. Hello? It, you better be on the right side of this out there. You better be on the right side of this one. I'm just saying. What was it? Um, what, what person in Turkey just had a major health event? He died on the spot. Just fell over dead. Talking about destroying Israel. Huh? He said they'll face all his wrath. If, and boom, he fell over dead. So, yeah, he did. The real, the real one. Elohim, Jehovah, Lord, amen. And see, and everybody in the world just kind of just looks over that and doesn't realize that they just, they just glaze over that. And I said, man, you better be on the right side of this one. Things are tightening up, and God will keep his word. Herod took the glory, I believe it was Herod, and the angel of the Lord smote him. He was eating the worms. 
because Israel was going to face the wrath of Allah. Let's see what Allah had in store for him. Couldn't stop him. From, and, uh, you know, and I can guarantee you he didn't wake up to 40 Jewish virgins or 40 virgins waiting for him. Uh-uh. Yeah. I'm just saying. This is the time. Well, Jesus, Jesus has come to bring salvation to the world. I'm sorry, I kind of got this just a little bit diverted there. But this, we're living, we are living in the end times. Things are happening. And the world thinks that they can keep doing things. You need the light. You need to let the light shine into your darkness. You need to let the light shine in and give you the joy that comes only from God. Hallelujah. See, we got all these people out here who are all messed up and all these things they're doing with and they're trying to be happy and they're trying to be happy uh, in weird ways and they're just, you know, the world's trying to in, 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 um, embellish their, their, their darkness. Amen? The Bible talks about the people um, who are walking in sin and darkness and that there are those who not only, um, what's, how's, how's the King James put it? Um, I'm going to paraphrase it. They basically condone it, but not only do they condone it, they rejoice in their sin. And I, can't, I can't think of the right off the top of my head exactly how it's worded. All right? But they're rejoicing over their sin. But see, light has come. Arise, shine, for the light has come. And the glory of the Lord, amen, has come unto thee. God wants us to see the light. Why? Because it will bring joy. The light will bring joy. The miserable state that people are in, the darkness they're walking in, that can be transformed and changed. When the light comes, the prophecy of hope, the declaration of peace, the light coming to bring joy. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Isaiah seven fourteen says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, meaning God with us. Amen? Uh, I find it interesting in, in Latino culture, culture, they like to name people Emmanuel, like to name Jesus, which is Jesus. Jesus Cristo es el Señor de Sonores. See? Jesus Christ is Lord. He's, he's the sir of sirs. Like a lot of Latin and languages, they don't have a word for Lord, so it's, they use sir, but the sir is el señor, the sir. And then I just took it and went de sonores, of sirs, the sir of sirs. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. God with us. Luke chapter 1. And in the six months, the angel six month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into the city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin and spouse to a man whose name they were engaged. They're in their waiting period. Okay, which which with Jews was about a year. You'd be engaged for about a year. They didn't elope in those days. Okay. Um. To a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in to her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when he saw him, and when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of sal salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, Thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. Uh, now, that is the Greek form of the Hebrew Joshua, Yeshua. Actually, the Hebrew is Yeshua. Joshua is the English form of, of Yeshua. It's Joshua. Jesus was the Greek form of Yeshua. Okay? He shall be great. He shall be called the son of the highest. The Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of, the, of his kingdom there shall be no end. And then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? She's a virgin. Okay? Y'all figure that out. Okay? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, 
and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the son, uh, be called the son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived in her a, a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who is called barren. For with the Lord, or for with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto thee according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Now, if you'll study this out, and I have, I broke this down, commentaries, Greek uh, concordances, Greek study. Verse 37 says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. The Greek literally translated says this, No word of God is void of the power necessary to bring it to pass. Hallelujah. No word from God is void of the power necessary to bring it to pass. That is literally what that says in, in, in Greek coming into English. You say, how shall this be? He said, no word from God is void of the power necessary to bring it to pass. Be it unto me. What does she say? Behold the handmaid unto the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. He just told her, no word from God has voided the power necessary to bring it to pass. She said, be it unto me according to thy word. Amen. She received. Amen. Glory to God. She received the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 2. And it came to pass in those days that when I decreed from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. I'm going to tell you, taxers have been around forever. They're always trying to find a way to run it, you know, take your money. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenus was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that when they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn. For everybody in the line that. The Virgin Mary did not stay a virgin. She had other kids. She is not the Virgin Mary. She bore other sons through natural conception process. Her and Joseph engaged in marital relations after Jesus was born. And they had sons and sisters, daughters. They had children. So she ceased to be the Virgin Mary. Y'all here? You're going home. Thank you. That's just the way it is. And um, she brought first her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. What's the glory? It's the light of God. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. Did not God say he would send his light into the darkness? The Lord's, uh, you know, and, and, and the light came, and the world, the earth could not. Uh, I'm look, I start thinking of scriptures that I didn't put in my notes. And um, just hold on to your Bibles. And the light came, and the, the, the darkness did not, comprehended it not. I was trying to find that exact. Well, anyway, there you go. Okay. Now, now King James says comprehended. Amen. But, it, you know, it, uh, better translate overcome or apprehended it not. The light came, it couldn't stop it. Okay. All right. The light shined, or, you know, in the, you know, shined in the darkness, darkness comprehended it not, something like that. Okay. Darkness cannot 
put out the light. Even in the natural, it can't happen. There's a black hole in space. They don't know what's going on there. They think they know what's going on. We ain't, we ain't sent a satellite that far out. We ain't sent a testing thing that far out. Y'all hear you go home? They just think they know. They don't even know what's going on in the ocean. Hello? We got, we got more exploration to do here on the own planet than they do out there 14 million light years away. They just sit around and think they think they know. All right? For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. But notice that they said, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Why? The light is shining. And Isaiah prophesied that this light would come in, that, in verses 1 through 7 of Isaiah chapter 9. And we found out that that light came because unto us a son is given. Amen. A child is born. I mean, unto us a child is born, a son is given. And his name should be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Amen? Hallelujah. And then, you know, two years later, about, or so, uh, the wise men showed, the magi showed up. We sixty kings of Orient are. Why do you say that? Because they didn't travel in groups of three. The magi traveled in caravans of about sixty. Okay, so about sixty. They get the three for the gold, the frankincense, and the myrrh. So if you got a real nativity, there's no such thing as a nativity. No, no, no. <laughs> we get the Okie showing up. He's pronouncing stuff weird. Pecan, nativity. You have to acquiesce. When in Rome, do as the Romans. When in North Carolina, do as the North Carolinians. It's pecan. That's right. Actually, we're the original landing spot. In this state. The lost colony. Yeah, yeah, all right. I just like to pick on Cap. Yeah, they can't talk out in Oklahoma. They, they, they do barbecued rolls of bologna. Dick's going, hmm. I, I moved to Oklahoma, and they're out there advertising half a roll of bologna with baked beans. I'm like, what? I never tried it. And then you come home and eat down east barbecue and just. It's better than all of it. All right. I'm, I, am not, I am not a snoot on barbecue. I like different kinds. But I, just, I do know what's best. So anyway, uh, they, they went to the king, and, you know, they're, they're, doing, they're fine. And so they, 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 there was a light going before them. For two years, this light, we, we call it the Bethlehem light, our star, okay? And it, it moves, and it came and stood over where the, the child lay, okay? And... Um, when they heard the king, they departed, and to the and, and lo, the star which they see they had they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over the, the young where the where the young child was, and when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Now the Lady Wolf Trio used to sing the song, "When they saw the light, they rejoiced with great joy. When they saw the light." They rejoice. Amen. Let's see the light, the light, the star, the light. They rejoice with great joy. Because God said 
through prophecy that he would send a light into the land. And they would rejoice like they're uh, gathering harvest. They would rejoice like they're dividing spoil. Why? Because the light showed them the way of deliverance and salvation and freedom from all the oppression of the earth. It, the answer had come, glory to God. Yeshua HaMashiach had arrived, praise God. The promise, hallelujah, of Genesis 3.15, glory to God, that the, that the child shall bust your head, boy. The seed of the serpent shall bruise the heel. Amen? God says that the seed of the woman would bruise the head of the serpent. And I remember Jerry Savelle years ago saying, I heard this day he preached this 40 plus years ago. He said, now we're down in Texas, bruise his head. That means bust your head in Texan. He's coming to bust the head of the devil. Why the head? Because that's where the crown is of authority. And Jesus came to bust his head to take that authority back. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. The, the, the light is shining. The light is standing over. The light is shining on. The answer of the prophecy of Isaiah 9. And they rejoice with great joy. Just like the prophecy said they would rejoice like the harvesters, and rejoice like those who spoil, who divide the spoil. They rejoice with a great joy, with the understanding and knowledge that Messiah had come. The answer of Isaiah in chapter 9 had been brought forth into the earth. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. And um, the child grew. And waxed strong in the spirit, filled with wisdom. And the grace of God was upon him. And for this purpose was the Son of God manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. And then that light continues to shine. Remember, I, uh, the interest of that word giveth light. He is the light of the world. First Peter 1 8 says, Whom not having not seen you you uh, you love, and whom though now you see him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. The joy of this season is not that there was a babe in Bethlehem only. The joy now is the babe in Bethlehem grew up, became a man, and walked and became our sin for us and redeemed us. You know, I have an old Christmas message I preach. I'll preach it every so often. And the child grew up. Yeah. Messiah had come. The Savior was here. There was joy. There was peace. I mean, there was hope. There was peace. There was joy. And now, after his death, burial, and resurrection, we believe us into next Sunday. Because of all those things, we will be able to experience in full the love of God. What joy. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing. I need to start to start four octaves lower than I do. I ain't getting up high. You know the righteous brothers. I love the righteous brothers. I could hang with Bill Medley. Well, I couldn't even go down that low. I, I can't, but I could never touch Bobby Hatfield. He was a tenor, uncrazy tenor on Unchained Medley. Well, he could hit the high notes. Yeah. Joy to the world. We as believers should be bearers of the light so that people can have joy that is unspeakable. It is joy unspeakable, full of glory, full of glory, 
full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. All the half has never yet been told. Amen. Amen. I can still see the old Pentecostals in the church with their hymnals, singing the course, the verses, and then they would close them with their fingers still stuck in there so you didn't lose your place, and they'd start clapping. It is joy unspeakable and full of, you know, full of, and then you stop, open back up, and start singing the next verse. That was how we did it. We didn't have wall hymnals. We had paper hymnals. What's a wall hymnal? Yeah, this is scriptures on the wall, the songs on the wall. All right? Hallelujah. The joy has come. Can you, can you imagine the shepherds staying there realizing? Can, can you even fathom? They've been lying in darkness all those years, and there they stand with the light shining. Isaiah chapter 9. No wonder they rejoiced. 1,500 years of silence. No prophets, no minor prophets, no major prophets. Silence until John the Baptist came in the wilderness. But that was later. That didn't happen until after they had had this experience. So yeah, John was only six months older than Jesus. Okay? Only six months older. Remember, she was six months. She's in her sixth month. So it won't like that John showed up next week. They saw the light. Okay? He went to the temple when, for his circumcision, remember? The old man. He said, now I can depart because his eyes had seen the promised Messiah. The light that shines. And we must shine the light throughout the earth. Hallelujah. And let people know because they are walking in darkness. They're walking in gross darkness. And just like the Assyrians and, and plundered, plundered and invaded Israel, and in that time of darkness, uh, a, a prophecy was given. We now must go to people who are living in darkness and have been plundered by Satan and plundered by an evil world and by an evil system that is designed to destroy people. Uh, I see it in so many areas. And like, let's just use college. Let's use the athletics in general. Now the gambling associations are trying to influence NFL officials to th basically throw games. There's so much. So there's so. It's because gambling got involved. Now the pressure is there's, there's billions, millions, hundreds, millions, hundreds of millions of dollars at stake over a point spread in the football game. Hello? College athletics don't even exist anymore. The name, the NIL, the name imaging licensing uh, thing they passed, where these, that's why all these tra athletes are transferring from one college to another because they can leave maybe Podunk University who gave them a chance to play, but now they showed themselves, and now Alabama wants them. They can go there and go from getting, you know, $200,000 for their picture image of them and their licensing of that image to making a couple of million dollars in college off the name and image and licensing rule. So they're transferring like crazy. It's entering the transfer protocol. Why? Because they're going to get more money. And why, why, is, why are schools wanting to get these guys? And, you know, and why are people throwing money at it? Because they make more money when the big guys get more wins. And it's happening at the, all, the whole level of college now. So really there is no such thing as true amateur athletics anymore. It doesn't exist. Maybe in Little League football. But I'll guarantee you they're starting to get name. Yeah, they're starting to get name and imaging in down into a uh, high school. It'll start happening down there. It'll happen. You know, this is a star athlete. You know, we gotta you know protect his future, and he gets a you know so he does a commercial and he gets paid ex exorbitant amounts of money. The whole world's become this way. It doesn't care. Are you here? 
The world system and the evil world leaders don't care if somebody's messed up by, by not knowing if they're a boy or a girl. It makes them money to support and push things. Hello. We got groups that are out there destroying the country, and they don't care about the people they say they represent with their name. They're getting millions of dollars and buying multi-million dollar homes with that money. So there is a darkness out there, and there is an organized echelon of society that is organizing it to keep people in darkness. Our school systems are not in disarray because kids are just stupid. They're in disarray because evil people want them dumbed down so they can control them and have control over their lives and have control over their thinking and destroy their ability to critically think and critically reason. Why? Because they want them in darkness. That's okay. They may go and do what they do. We may not like it. But you have something you can do about it. And you don't have to hold up a protest sign. And you don't have to go out there and say abortion is evil. You just go shine the light. Did we ever find that scripture? The light shined in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. And the light shined in the darkness, and the darkness, thank you, there it was right there in front of me, right there. First John, 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 John 1, 4. I mean, verse 5. In him was light, life, and the life was the light of men. Light, his life is the light. His life is the light. What well, comes when, when, when people see the, 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 the experience of having his life the light comes, and with that comes joy unspeakable and full of glory. Carry joy. Carry the light to people so they can have joy, not be a bunch of Grinches. We laugh at the Grinch. We all think it's funny. And it's, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a funny, and, and usually the story behind the Grinch ends up being good. He gets, he gets happy in the end. I'm not sure who the Christ figure is in the Grinch Stole Christmas, but Jesse had a teacher in high school that every, every book or work of um, literature had a Christ figure. She was always looking for the Christ figure. I mean, I, I'm guessing Luke was in Star Wars. Um, not sure who he is in the Grinch Stole Christmas. Um. There's a lot of people, now they, they love the Grinch. The Grinch is cool. You know, it's, it's cool to be Grinchy. You don't need to let out your inner Grinch. You need to push your inner Grinch down, get him out, and let the light come and experience the joy of, 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 of Messiah being, being shown unto you through the light of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for our time together. We thank you for this third Sunday of Advent of joy. We thank you that we have been able to experience the joy of salvation, the joy of knowing you, the joy that is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Because the light has come. Even as in darkness, the light has shone. Because the son, a child was born and a son was given. Hallelujah. Thank you for it. Now use us, use us to go minister that life, of your light, to other people so they can know this same joy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen? Thank you for joining us today. And um, we, we trust you've enjoyed yourself, praise God. Uh, we're going to receive our Sunday morning offering. If you need an offering envelope, uh, you, you can get that on the seat backs in front of you. You can give electronically through PayPal, Cash App, or Tithely through our, our, our church app. You can go ahead and get that ready. Hit send.
Glory to God. As we pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, bless the people as they tithe, give, and sow into the work of God. Walking in obedience to your word, we thank you that you open heaven's windows and pour out blessings on them they don't have room enough to receive. They're a delightsome land. They lend them in and don't borrow. The devourers rebuke for their sake. Hallelujah. And they walk in full overflow and supply. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Go ahead, Brother Joe. Those out there, if you want to give, you can go ahead. You see the information up on your screen. Go ahead and uh, give into that. Glory to God. If you want to download our app, they can. you can do so by going to what? Out what watching? Okay, that's on your screen where you can download our app. You can uh, download our app and get online with us. And there's also an electronic giving uh, set up in there and um, through Tithely. And um, once you're set up one time, you don't have to do it again. You just hit text and you type, you send it. Glory to God. I have to hit the uh, send the uh, take a text, send it to the address and the amount, and it goes straight to it. Isn't that cool? All right, um, thank you for joining us. Remember these words from 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4, uh, that who's, what sir is born of God overcome at the world. This is the victory that overcome at the world, even our faith. Remember, next Sunday, we will not have live in building, but we will be um, coming to you at 1030, hallelujah, uh, streaming through our, our Facebook, whoever else, uh, through our app, uh, through the Expedition Church app, through uh, whatever other means we actually are live on. YouTube, we, I'm not sure if we're live on um, Speak TV or not. I, I know we, we are on, that's a delayed. But um, uh, whatever means that you use, you can watch us next Sunday. Until we meet again, remember these words. That we just quoted to you, and you have a great day. Amen? See you next time here at Expedition Church of the Triad.